Welcome back to Retro Axis. On this episode, we'll be discussing emulation on the Atari VCS. Let's get started. Emulators are very complex pieces of software that are written specifically to translate the hardware from an old machine, such as a Nintendo or a Sega, onto the modern processor that you're using. In this case, an AMD Ryzen processor, which is PC compatible on the Atari VCS. So in order to run games from like the PlayStation 2 or GameCube or other older systems like, you know, uh, the Sega Genesis, you need to be able to have an emulator installed. And because I've got Linux installed, uh, Ubuntu specifically, on my Atari VCS, I'm able to install several different emulators and test them. So it's not very interesting for me to show you running like Atari 2600 games or Intellivision games, because that's been done numerous times and those can even run on devices like the Raspberry Pi. But I have received several questions from viewers about, hey, can this thing run PlayStation 2 or Wii games or GameCube or what have you? Uh, and so I was able to get running uh, the uh, a couple of games on the GameCube emulator and the PlayStation 2 emulator, which I'll show you here in just a minute. Now, again, I've done this on Linux. Um, I also saw a video from EVA Prime. We did a really great job of showing off the capabilities using Windows 10 on the Atari VCS. Uh, and so I highly recommend you check out that video. It was fantastic. Uh, but in this episode, I'm just going to do a quick look, nothing too deep or serious on these, just to show you that it's working. I'll show you just a few of the features uh, and configuration settings that I had enabled to uh, make this work. And uh, hopefully you can see that this machine is certainly capable of running emulation on the Linux operating system. Now, first, I'm going to use PCSX2, which is a PlayStation 2 emulator on the Atari VCS. I'm going to begin by booting a game called Blood Rain from an ISO image. Now my ISO image is running on an external USB stick which is plugged into the front of the Atari VCS. and I will launch the game to show you live gameplay. So you see the loading time is pretty quick, seemingly faster than from the actual CD, which is nice. Let's go then. So the overall response is really great. So I'm not feeling any lag from the controller. Everything's working normal. Now it did take me a few minutes to configure the controller and set it up with the emulator, but that's normal setup that anyone would have to do using an emulator. All right, so let's quit out of this and take a quick look at the settings. So if I go into my PCSX2, we can take a look at the settings that I've got configured for the emulator. My default aspect ratio is 16 by nine, and I've got it defaulted to go into full screen mode on startup. But here under plugin settings, you can see here I'm using the OpenGL. I've also heard that using DirectX on Windows, you get a little bit better results with this particular emulator. And I saw a video that was done by EVA Prime, which was a great video. He used Windows 10 and uh, everything looked really phenomenal. Um, but I wanted to do this same video or similar video on Linux, um, since this is what I already had installed and up and running. Now, if you remember my setup for the Atari VCS in the last few episodes, I've actually been using the onboard SSD or the M.2 storage uh, built that's built into uh, the VCS. I'm using that. Um, while I did upgrade the RAM and did upgrade 
uh, an additional drive. I haven't actually used the additional drive in this system yet. Uh, it's also worth noting that I performed the same test with the PCS uh, X tool uh, actually without the RAM upgrade and I had very similar results. So you can probably, and again, uh, this, this particular emulator uh, for what it's worth is a 32-bit emulator. So it wouldn't even theoretically be able to allocate more than four gigs of RAM um, because it is a 32-bit Linux application. Now, audio on Linux took a few things to tweak. Uh, as an example, I needed to change the default here uh, to SDL, and I also had to modify the SDL API to use pulse audio. So that was a tweak I did have to make. Under controllers, um, I did manually go in here and actually configure these. So I am plugged in over USB with the, um, the, the modern controller, the Xbox style controller. So I simply mapped the buttons and everything worked as expected. So jumping back into the gameplay with the frame rates enabled. Let's go then. Okay, so that was the PS2 emulator. Let's fire up the GameCube. We have the exact same game actually on GameCube. So let's open it up. All right, so this is the Dolphin emulator, which is a GameCube and Wii emulator. So you can hear the fan, I don't know if you can hear it, but the fan on the units going pretty hard. So this thing will, uh, you know, these emulators will push the, the processor pretty hard. Okay, so getting into the gameplay. So again, very fast load times once the emulator's warmed up. Let's go then. Check inside. Locked. And the windows are blocked. Let's hope they didn't barricade the door from the inside. Oh. 
Oh, it's blocked from the other side. But there seems to be a weak spot in the wall. Kindly make us a new door this way. I'd like to investigate. So again, I am using the modern controller of the Atari VCS. Tear it apart, Ray. So I am seeing some lag here. I just noticed the FPS going down to around 45 and 43. So I am getting a little bit of lag, at least in this particular scene. Show off. Bloodlust satisfied? Not bad. Shh. There's one. Use your aura sense to see it in the dark. But we can see graphic settings. We're using OpenGL. Full screen is set to automatic. We're using an automatic aspect ratio. And we're using the default resolution. So I really didn't change any of these settings. In fact, Dolphin worked out of the box a lot easier than the PS2 emulator did. All right, so that's it for the emulation video. Uh, certainly there's a lot more we could do to explore emulation, but I've got some other things I really wanna test on the Atari VCS. So if you have any comments or suggestions, feel free to put them down below. If you enjoyed the show, feel free to subscribe, give us a thumbs up, share, and like. And we'll see you next time on Retro Axis.